Hello friends, in this lesson we will create a Capture the Flag game in UEFN. Capture the Flag is a two-team game that can be played with up to 12 players on each team. The goal is to capture the opposing team's flag and bring it back to your home base and drop it off. The first team to capture their enemy's flag three times wins. We're going to look at creating the basics for this game mode so you can expand on it to make your creative experience. During this tutorial, we'll be cutting over to slides like you can see here that will show you the properties on the devices that you'll need to change. If you don't see a property listed on the slide, keep those device properties at their default. While the slides will only be visible for a brief time, feel free to pause and take as long as you need to update the properties before moving on. I'm going to start off by using the pre-made Creative Island template for Capture the Flag as the basis for our level design. The level design is really important because proper design helps with the setup and overall flow of a Capture the Flag game and adds to the fun for the players. We can see we have a blue side on the left and a red side on the right and the map is symmetrical. Everything on the left is the same as on the right, that way there's no advantage for either team. Our focus is going to be on making the Capture the Flag portion of this. The map itself is up to you and how you want to design it. If you want to follow along, you can go ahead and grab the Creative Island template from Fortnite Creative Mode. The first thing we're going to need to do is set up our island experience. So let's search for island in our outliner and go ahead and set up the properties for this map. With all the settings set up on our island settings device, we're going to need to set up our classes. Since Capture the Flag is traditionally a class-based setup, you'll have different classes that the players can choose from when they start. Let's go ahead and look in our Fortnite Devices folder for the Class Designer and let's drag one in. I'm going to do it on top of my building here. This will be our default class, so we're just going to set it up with the basics because we want them to choose a custom class, but this is what they will use when they respawn back in. This one is going to be very simple. It's just the class name of default with the class slot of 1. We're not really going to give it anything, it's just our base class. I'm going to duplicate my class designer using Alt and drag it over to make a second one. We'll go ahead and set this up as our fighter class. With our second class designer set up for our fighter class, we can go ahead and set up our team settings device. I'm going to drag a team settings and inventory device into the world and put it above the starting area for this team. Let's go ahead and set up the properties for our team settings and inventory device. Keep in mind, we will probably have to duplicate these at some point for our other team, but for now, we're just creating the first team to get the basic setup. With our class settings device set up, we should be able to test this. However, we have nowhere to start from, so let's go ahead and go to where the starting room is set up for this map. You can see right here, we have a little starting area. This is where we're going to choose our class selector device as well as our spawning devices. So let's set up a few player spawn devices. Now you want to make sure you set up enough player spawns for all the players. For example, since we have the set to 12, we'll want 6 player spawn devices. But for testing purposes, these 3 are fine. We also want to make sure all three of these are set up for the player team team 1 index because, well, this is for the first team. Let's make sure these are all set up as not visible in the game because it detracts from the appearance of the game. Next, on the other side of the room, we're going to drag a class and team selector device in and set it up. Since this is the only class selector device we're going to be using for this example, we know that we need to change our class to switch to class slot 2. Class slot 1 is going to be our default class. We should also go under Advanced to make sure clear items on switch is enabled because we're going to be giving them brand new items. At this point, we should be able to test this out and see if it works inside the Fortnite play session. Let's go ahead and start the game. It should spawn us in on one of our spawn pads. The round will start. Our class selector should activate. We shouldn't have anything equipped, so we're good there. Run into the class selector and now we have our class 2 selected. We should be able to go out and now start working on the actual capture the flag portion of our game mode. Back inside the editor, let's set up the item we want to capture as well as the area to return that flag to when it's captured. We're going to look for two devices, the capture item and we have a capture area and a capture item spawner. 
the areas where the captured item will be returned to, the captured item spawner is the item that spawns the item we want to capture. They can be in two different places, but for this example, we're going to put them both in the same area. When we drag a capture area into the world, we can now see this is where we're going to return our item to, and then we're going to drag the capture item spawner onto the same spot. Let's go ahead and clean this up in the outliner. Let's call this Capture Area Team 1, and then we'll name the other Capture Item Spawner Team 1, because we're going to need one for each of our teams. This will make it easier to find. Now, let's set up our spawner. First, what we want to do is set up our friendly team to our current team index. We want to set the Captured By to Hostile. That means only enemy teams can take this item itself. Let's set the accent color to whatever we want. In this case, the color is aqua. That's the color I set up for our team earlier, so we're good there. And the return the dropped item will set it to 10 seconds. That way, if the player is eliminated and they drop the flag, it will automatically return in 10 seconds. Now, we need to actually tell it what item. So in our item list, let's add an element and we're going to look for flag in the item definition. We have one, it's the flag Fortnite item definition. You'll see if we rotate over, our flag is now set up inside of our spawner, so that's good. Now we need to set up the ability for it to be captured. Let's go to our Capture Area Team 1 and set this up. With those two devices changed, we can push our changes and look at it live inside of Fortnite. Back inside of Fortnite, we can run up to the top of our area. Once we get to the top, this is our Capture Area. We can see we have our flag set up and we have the spawn area working. However, that doesn't really help much. We can't capture our own flag, so now we need to duplicate this work over to the enemy team and then test out the actual capture the flag mechanics. I'm going to do that now. For our purposes, we're not going to set up the actual spawning area for the other team. We're just going to set up their flag so that we can capture and return it. So let's go and grab our capture area team 1 and capture item spawner team 1. I'm going to hold down the ALT key and drag so that I'm duplicating them and now if I wanted to, I can hold down the shift key and drag and I can move it and my camera all the way across over here. Now we can see we have them in the right area. I'll adjust it a little bit and then we'll change their properties. Let's also make sure we rename these. So this is going to be capture area team 2 and capture item spawner 2. Well, that was really nice of it. Now you just need to change the things appropriate for team 2. So for example, it's team index 2 instead of 1. We want a different accent color. For example, we might want to go with red or orange. The rest of the items should be the same for our capture area. This time, under team index 2. Everything else should still be the same. One last thing we're going to do is set up the HUD controller, so that way our heads-up display better matches our capture the flag game mode. With that said, let's go ahead and load back in and play test to see if our basic capture the flag game mode is working. We can see we're loaded back in. I'm going to go ahead and speed run through all the enemies over to the enemy's flag. I'll go ahead and pick up the flag. Now that I have the flag, I'm going to go ahead and dodge all those enemies again back to my base. You can see when I get to my capture area, it will give me a point. After I get the point, the flag is then removed from my inventory and returned back to the enemy space. Of course, there are a lot of other options you can do to make Capture the Flag your own game experience. I'd recommend going to the documentation where there's a game build guide for Capture the Flag to give you some more ideas and other instructions. After checking out the documentation, I'd suggest heading over to the creative template island that this example was based off of. It's a great resource in order to see all the intricacies for Capture the Flag. It also includes a pre-game lobby and has all of our different class designers rather than just the one I used and everything else set up, built upon the basics that. So you can get started with making your perfect Capture the Flag level. I hope this video was helpful. See you in the next video. Bye.